God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away, giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, male and mountain, flowery meadow and flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. This is my Father's word, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. Which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning over us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward. Victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music lifts us onward in the triumph song. Joyful, 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 we adore Thee. I appreciate the Hemingers. Brother Hemminger is helping me. We're putting together a program right now. It's going to be Parkside Scout Rangers. And uh, that will take off in uh, September, and so we're looking forward to that. And it would be a time where our young people can learn to camp and learn to fish and uh, learn to uh, tie knots and learn, well, not tie knots around their parents, but tie knots and do all sorts of stuff. And so they'll enjoy that immensely. Hey, tonight I'll be preaching on choosing the will of God. That'll be 6 o'clock tonight. Hope you won't miss that service. It could be a great, great help and encouragement to you. Take your Bible and go back, if you will, to 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. And I, I want to read this verse again, but then I want to cross-reference it so that we understand the contents of this particular verse. The Bible says here in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now, if you were just reading that verse alone and just that segment of that verse alone, it would make you think that you have to fight and hold on to uh, in order to be saved. That is not true. The Bible says fight, the good fight of faith. It says lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, take your Bible, if you will, and uh, I just wrote this, these verses down just a few minutes ago, but I think it'd be good for us to look at them. Look at John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29. And uh, notice this, who's holding on to who here? For those that might be a little bit uh, not sure that once you receive Jesus Christ as Savior, that that is all in all in Christ. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verses 27 through 29, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give on to them, give on to them, so you're not working for it. I give on to them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them, it says, 
out of my hand. All right, so notice who's holding on to who here. The Bible says in verse 29, says my father, which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. All right, so here you have a double assurity, a double assurance that you have Jesus holding you and then the father holding Jesus. Now, by the way, you cannot get any better than that. All right, so it's not a matter of once you get saved that you hold on to salvation. No, you're being held on to by Jesus, yes, even God the Father. So go back now with that in mind and look at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, where the Bible says here, it says, fight the good fight of faith. Now listen to it, fight the good fight of faith. It says, lay hold on eternal life. Now in order for us to understand the context of which this verse is given, we can find that in the rest of the verse whereby the Bible says this, it says, whereunto thou art called, it says, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. All right, so here's what he's saying. He's saying that that eternal life that you have, you ought to profess it well. In other words, it's talking about your testimony. Once you're saved, you ought to profess it well. Now notice what he says here. He says, lay hold on eternal life. Several times in your Bible do you see where it says hold on to things, but there's only five times in your New Testament where it says hold fast. So I want to speak this morning on hold fast. You know, when I was in elementary school, uh, this was a couple years ago, when I was in elementary school, I attended a school in Hampstead, Maryland. That's where I was raised. And so I attended the, uh, the elementary school in Hampstead, Maryland. And we had a PE instructor that, that taught us how to climb the big ropes, the big ropes. And so uh, we would get uh, climbing up there. And, and you know, for a little guy uh, that was in third or fourth grade to climb those big ropes, they looked like that they extended up forever into the heavens. And it just didn't you just didn't think you could climb those things. And so, but we'd get on those ropes and we would begin to climb those ropes. And, and all of a sudden our hands would begin to slip and some of the fellows started to scoot back down the, the, the ropes there and uh, he would yell out, hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. In other words, what he was saying was get a good grip on it. Get a good grip on it. Now, by the way, there's five things in the Bible that God says we ought to hold fast to. There's five things in the Bible that God says we ought to get a good grip on. Now, by the way, when God tells us that we ought to get a good grip on it and hold fast to it, then you and I ought to pay very close attention to that. There's some things that God says that we ought to get a good grip on. Some things we ought to hold fast to. Let me bring them uh, to you, if I may. Statement number one, hold fast to your, your, your uh, position of growth. Hold fast. Now, God says, uh, now, by the way, listen to me. In this room today, we have many different variations of Christians. I didn't say variations of Christianity. There's only one that's Christ. But, but as far as your growth is concerned, we have different people in here. We have people that's been saved for a long time and you have grown ever since then. We've had people that's been saved for a long time and you've not grown uh, uh, ever since then. You've taken some dips. We've had people that's uh, been saved just recently and on fire for Christ. We have people that's been saved just recently and it's all new and you're taking your time and understanding everything. We have different levels of Christianity that's represented in this room. Now here's what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 3 and in verse 3. The Bible says, remember therefore, it says, how thou has received and heard, that's what it says, and hold fast and repent. All right? So here he's speaking to the church there in Revelation, and he says, now wait a minute, he says, thou has received and heard. He said, once you receive it and you hear it, he says, hold fast on. Now what is that? Uh, that is talking about your position, if you will please, in your growth. All right, there have, there, there have to come a time in your life and in my life as believers that we have to repent of some things. By the way, repentance is mentioned more times in your Bible for the believer than for the unbeliever. Uh, the word repent simply means to change your mind, all right? So he says to this which is a gathering of believers, he says, okay, he said, I want you to hold fast onto something, and he's talking about your Christian growth, and he says, repent. In other words, if you need to change your mind, then change your mind. But he's saying, don't change your position. You hold fast. In other words, here's a person that's climbing in their Christian growth. It's like climbing that rope in their Christian growth, and all of a sudden they get tired, all of a sudden they get weary, all of a sudden they feel 
will faint. All of a sudden, they feel like giving up. All of a sudden, they feel like throwing in the towel. All of a sudden, they feel like it's not worth it. All of a sudden, they feel like that uh, uh, they might as well just uh, uh, not continue. All right? Now, God says, when you come to that time in your life, when you feel like you cannot continue, when you come to that time in your life, when you feel like you're going to faint, when you come to that time in your life, when you feel like throwing them to towel, uh, when you come to that time in your life, when you feel like it's not worth it, when you come to that time in your life where you feel like giving up, when you come to that time in your life when you feel like being depressed, he said, do this, simply hold fast. Hold fast. In other words, don't lose your position of growth. Don't go backwards. Just hold on until you can get strength again to be able to go forward. So you hold fast to your position of your Christian growth. Uh, we've had young people come to our Bible college here from different uh, states uh, around the country, and they come to our Bible college. And I, I remember one such one came to the Bible college and got backslid and went out and committed uh, some heinous, wicked sin, and then, uh, and then got right with God, and now going to uh, another independent Baptist church in another state. Now, wait a minute. Uh, wait. Uh, what, I, what I have a desire for that individual to do is uh, not to backslide again, but simply to hold on if they feel like they're slipping and they feel like they're getting away from God and they feel like they cannot make it and they feel like that uh, 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 they're not going to be able to survive, uh, I, I would shout out to them from this state to another, uh, simply hold on to where you are until you get your strength back, until you get your courage back, until you get your uh, definition clear, until you get your direction precise, you hold on and then you can climb again. All right, so he says to hold fast. Now, how is it that we're supposed to hold fast? Step number one, we hold fast uh, in our position of growth. Hold fast. And by the way, everybody's going to go through a fainting time. Uh, you're not a super Christian. Amen. Everybody's going to go through a weak time. Amen. There's going to be times when you pray and you feel like God is right at your front door. And there's going to be times that you pray that you cannot sense the presence of the Lord anywhere. There's going to be times when you come to uh, church and boy, you're excited about Bible. You're excited about truth. You can't wait to hear preaching. You can't wait to learn a truth. You can't wait to step out and obey that truth. And then there's going to be times in your life when you come to church and you just wonder why in the world you're here. You have no idea why you're here. There's going to come times in your life when you're excited about the things that we have. Now, can I tell you, but you cannot always live on the mountaintop. We, we do not have a fairy tale Christianity. Well, I wish everything was all rosy. Uh, you're dreaming. Amen. Everything would not always be rosy. You're going to have flat tires. You're going to have to visit the dentist. You're going to have uh, uh, somebody uh, that crosses you the wrong way. You're going to have people that doesn't agree with you, that stands uh, uh, diametrically opposed to you. You're going to have people that make fun of you. You say, oh, no, not in this world. Yes, always in this world. Now, I'm saying this, statement number one, uh, it says five times in your Bible that we're supposed to hold fast. Statement number one, hold fast to your position of growth. Statement number two, hold fast to your truth. I said your truth. Your truth. Now, by the way, all truth ought to be personal truth. Amen. You ought to be able to look in the Bible and say, that's a truth God gave me. That's a truth that God gave me. That's a truth that I can live on. That's a truth that I can abide on. That's a truth that God gave me. Me. All right, now wait a minute. Here's what it says. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 13, I'm giving you the, the references and the verses I'm reading to you where in your Bible it says to hold fast. All right? Uh, he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13, he says, hold fast, it says, the form of sound words which he'd heard of me, listen to what it says here, uh, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. All right, so here's what he says. He said to hold fast. Now, this is Paul talking to young Timothy. Uh, by the way, Timothy had a godly mother and a godly grandmother. And he said, you've heard these things from your godly mother and your godly grandmother. And, and so uh, Paul is telling Timothy, you hold fast to the truth. He said, hold fast uh, to, it says, hold fast. It says, the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me. It says, in faith and love, uh, which is in uh, Christ Jesus. All right, so here's what he says. He says, the things that you have heard, he said, hold fast. Now, thank God for a godly mama. If you've had a godly mama coming up, thank God for her. Thank God for a godly daddy. Oh, you say, but they're not what they ought to be. They're more than you deserve. 
You didn't get that, did you? They're more than you deserve. Hey, if you got a dad or a mom that loves you enough to bring you to church, hey, you got a dad or a mom that loves you enough to put food on the table, you got a dad or a mama that loves you enough to put clothes on your back, uh, you have a, a dad or a mama that loves you enough to give you a shelter to rest your head in, can I tell you, you ought to thank God for dad and mama. Now, wait a minute. And so here's what he says here. He says, hold fast, it says, to your truth. All right? And so hold fast to the form of the sound words uh, which ye have heard of me. It says, in faith, and it says, love, uh, which is in Jesus Christ. So uh, you've heard some things from mom and daddy, and mom and daddy has been good to you, and mom and daddy has held your hand, and mom and daddy has walked you down uh, a spiritual aisle. Thank God for that. Don't throw the baby out with the wash water. Amen. Thank God. You say, well, they don't pray all the time. Thank God they once did. Well, they don't always read the Bible. Thank God they read it once. Yeah, I think if we would turn our nation around uh, from that which is being a bunch of ingrates to those that are grateful, it would be a big difference in the way that we perceive things. Amen. I'm telling you, it would. Oh, we come to church and we got poochy lip disease. Well, this isn't right and that isn't right. Normally the person says that this isn't right and that isn't right is the person that's not right. Because they're seeing it through their own filter. But when I come to church, boy, I thank God. I get to shake hands with good men of God and uh, thank God for them and thank God for their ministry and thank God for what they're doing for Jesus Christ and uh, thank God uh, for those that are church members and, and thank God for those that came this morning and oh, thank God for the singing and thank God for the offering and thank God that we have an invitation and thank God for the gospel and thank God for those that come to church and you get to see them and fellowship with them and love them and walk beside them them and encourage them and help them and be close to them. Thank God for, see, you can come to church and be thankful or you can come to church and be an ingrate. You can come to church excited about the things of God and be excited about what God is doing in your life and be excited about what God is doing in other people's lives or you can come to church, uh, pardon my words, but stuck up. Now, I'm saying, listen to me, uh, hold fast to that which is your position of growth. If you've grown someplace and you've loved the Lord, hold fast to that. Hey, some of you, uh, uh, you can only come Sunday morning, or yet you only choose to come on Sunday morning. Hey, can I cheer you on? Uh, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. You hold fast to that which you have uh, gripped on to, and you stay there until you can move farther in your Christian growth and your Christian life. I'm saying there's some things in the Bible that you ought to decide to simply hold fast Two. Statement number one, hold fast to your position of growth. Statement number two, hold fast to your truth. The truth that God gives you. You say, I don't know all the Bible. Hold fast to that which you do know. Well, I don't understand it all. Well, hold fast to that which you do understand. Well, I don't agree with all of it. Well, hold fast to what you do agree. Well, I just don't practice all of it. Well, hold fast to what you do practice. Well, I just don't always uh, see eye to eye. Well, hold fast to the one eye that you've got while you're looking. I'm saying hold fast to your position of growth. Statement number two, hold fast to your truth. Statement number three, hold fast to your profession. Hold fast to your profession. Now, watch in your Bible, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Here's what it says. The Bible says, let us hold fast, it says, the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. All right? You know, the older that I get as a preacher, I've been preaching now for 32 years, and the older I get as a preacher, the harder it is uh, to uh, uh, be able, if you will, to be excited about witnessing. It's harder. When I first went to Bible college, it was easy. Just saved, only been saved a year. Uh, man, so excited about the things of God, knew nothing but was excited about all that I did not know and the things that I did know excited me more. I mean, uh, just those little things I knew. Boy, I was excited. I wasn't pastoring a church back then. I didn't have the responsibility of counseling people like I do today. 
I didn't have no Christian school to have to give attention to, and I didn't have no Bible college to have to give attention to, and I didn't uh, have a great number of people that I uh, had to try to lead and give wisdom to and uh, help uh, in their personal life. I didn't have any of that. I was just free in Jesus being able to take and tell people about Jesus Christ. Man, I was a witnessing machine. If it, if it, <laughs> if it was living, I witnessed to it. Years ago, I used to preach at the Bethel Baptist Church up in Memphis, Tennessee, well, really in Walls, Mississippi. When I pastored up in uh, Union City, Tennessee, every so often, Brother uh, Roy Westmoreland, uh, uh, that uh, was Ron's dad. Ron's now the pastor now. Dr. Westmoreland is. But uh, Roy Westmoreland would have me come down, and he'd preach in their Bible college. And Mrs. Westmoreland, she, would, uh, she was just a witnessing machine. I mean, just, I've never saw a woman like this in my entire life. I mean, she's just a witnessing machine. And I wish she would have waited till after we would eat to, uh, uh, to do her witnessing endeavors. But uh, she would always, we'd go out to eat, and she would always, uh, the waitress would come up and say, well, how can I help you? And she would say, oh, honey, sit down. You need my help first. <laughs> and I'm thinking, let us put the order in first. You know, that way while you're winning her to Christ, you know, we could be uh, uh, getting our food prepared. But she is a witnessing machine. Uh, Brother Roy uh, Westmoreland used to say, my wife would witness to a wooden Indian if she could not see that the Indian, uh, uh, if she didn't know if it was wooden. I mean, she witnessed to everything, everything, everything. Now, can I tell you, listen to me. Uh, it's talking about that which is uh, your, uh, your profession. He says to hold fast. It says, uh, it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. You know, uh, as we get older, we're still supposed to witness. As we get older, we're still supposed to tell people about Christ. As we get older, we're still supposed to pass out the gospel uh, tracts. As we get older, we're still supposed to be able to set a good example for young people. As we get older, uh, we're still supposed to be faithful to that which is the very cause of Christ. All right, so I'm supposed to hold fast. Number one, I'm supposed to hold fast to my present position of growth. Oh, but preacher, I'm not growing. I'm not growing. Hold fast. Hold fast. Just get your win. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold, hold your position. You'll grow again. Look, never make a decision when your decision maker is broken or when you're emotionally beside yourself. Because here's what you do. Every single time, you'll make the wrong decision. Every single time. It's just like going, going shopping when you're hungry. The other day, my wife said, she said, honey, she said, would you like to go shopping with me? I said, sure, I'd like to go shopping with you. Of course I'd like to go shopping with you. I'd, I'd be glad to go shopping with you. And so, and in my heart, I'm thinking, I don't want to go shopping with you. But uh, she wanted to go shopping. And so we, we were going to go, Kroger, wasn't it, honey? We're going to go to Kroger. And, uh, and she said, well, we better eat before we go. You said, what is that all about? That's a smart woman. Because if you go shopping when you're hungry, you always buy more. Isn't it true? And you'll wind up eating half of the store before you leave. You'll always buy more. And she said, we need to eat before we go. I said, okay, let's eat. And so uh, we ate. Did you know Jared came with us? And we were in the store. I'm talking about Kroger. I'm talking about a grocery store. I'm talking about where well, there's lots of food. We were in, I didn't, I didn't know that, uh, you know, what he was doing, but uh, uh, we got back out to the car. He looked at both of us and he said, we were in and out in 30 minutes. I said, in and out of where? He said, we were in and out of the grocery store in 30 minutes. I said, you're kidding. He said, no. Now, you know why we were in and out in 30 minutes? Because we were full when we went in. You say, uh, what's that got to do with the sermon? I don't know, but it sure was good. Hold fast to your profession. You know, when, uh, when I was younger and in Bible college, can I tell you, I was excited. Uh, when I first took my first church many years ago, when I pastored my first church, boy, can I tell you, I was excited. Now, by the way, I'm not lost uh, much of that excitement, but can I tell you, uh, you have to work on it. By the way, in your marriage, you have to work on it. Well, I tell you what, our marriage is boring. Well, that's your fault. Say, so I don't like that. Well, I'm sorry. But that's your fault. Well, I tell you what, I just wish things would be different. Then make them different. 
I, I, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying hold fast to your position of growth in Christ. Uh, hold fast to your truth. Hold fast to your profession. Step number next. Uh, hold fast to your boldness. Your boldness. Look at it. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6. The Bible says, but Christ. It says, uh, as a son, it says, over his own house. Listen to it now. Whose house we are. He says, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing, it says, of the hope, says, firm unto the end. Now, what is that talking about? The confidence. That's, talking, that's, a, that's another word for boldness. So you hold fast to your confidence. You hold fast to your boldness. You know, okay, uh, all right, so here, here we are. Well, I'm, a, uh, I, I, I'm the pastor of Parkside Baptist Church. Our church has grown. We have people that was here when I came. We have people that has come since I have become pastor. Whether a person was here when I came or whether a person is presently here and has come since I have become pastor, the longer you are here, the more deeply I fall in love with you. And the more deeply I fall in love with you as a preacher, and don't get me wrong when I say this, and you'll identify with it in just a minute, the harder it is for me to scold you. You know why some parents have a hard time scolding their kids consistently? Because they love them deeply. Oh, you say, that's not true. Oh, yes, it is. You know why some preachers, when they get old, they don't preach strong? Because they build such deep relationships with their people and they respect them individually that they will lay aside a principle for a personality because they don't want to lose friends. Nobody likes losing friends. Come on, you know, I'm, 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 I'm telling you about a pastor's heart here. You know there's some times where I will preach a, I'm talking about a straightforward in your face type of message. And I will go to my office and I won't speak to anybody and I'll just sit there and hurt. Now, it's not that I don't want you to get the truth. Are you listening? And by the way, you be careful about these fair weather preachers. They never preach on sin. They, they're, they're tiptoeing through tulips with... Uh, uh, Timmy who? The guy used to tiptoe through the tools. That's back in your days. Yeah, you're going to pretend you don't know. Tiny Tim, thank you, thank you. You told him, didn't you? Tiny Tim, don't give me that look right there. I saw the record in your truck. And, uh, but now, uh, now wait a minute, watch this. <laughs> Brother Wesso sitting up here, I don't know nothing like that. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm, uh, no, he's not either. And, uh, <laughs> but hold, hold fast to your boldness. You know, uh, right is still right, wrong is still wrong, and it doesn't matter who you're dealing with. Right. See, that's the, that's the problem with our society today. Can I help you? I said that's the problem with our society today. Amen. Everybody wants to be politically right. right. Well, we can't say that because that's going to hurt. So, you know, I've never seen a country like our country has been in the past five years. I've never seen a country like this country where you have the minority that's making the decisions regardless of what the majority thinks. I, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Where you've got a bunch of uh, uh, people that say, well, I got offended. Well, what about all the other people who got offended? Man, they're taking down, oh, they're, they're taking down monuments that's been up since World War II honoring our soldiers because it has the word God on it. Now, I'm telling you, some of you Christians need to come out of the closet. Oh, you say, but preacher, it, no, I tell you, uh, if, if, uh, if uh, the pulpits would get back the way the pulpits need to be, hey! 
hey, uh, if uh, I, I met with a mayor just a couple uh, weeks ago, and uh, uh, there was something that was spread about our mayor that wasn't true, and, and uh, Brother Palmore found out about it, so I went down to uh, speak and had prayer with the mayor of Mesquite, and he said, preacher, he says it's not true. He says, uh, let me tell you, he said, uh, uh, those uh, that uh, has been against uh, me standing for right has now turned out uh, to stand against me, and I just can't believe it. And I almost felt like saying, welcome to the world. I feel like that we're uh, treading uphill. But can I tell you, it is still worth treading uphill. Hey, our young people need to understand what is right and what is wrong. You need to understand uh, that God uh, created the man and God created the woman and God created them to be a union. And can I tell you, uh, we need to understand that our country is going to hell in a handbasket and somebody's got to stand and somebody's got to go forward and somebody's got to do right. Why don't you do right in your neighborhood? Now, I, I'm saying this uh, as gently as I can. <laughs> Hold fast to your boldness. Amen. Hold fast to your boldness. Don't cow down. Well, you know, I've got a Bible laying on my desk and, and somebody came by and said, oh, you better move that. You better move that. You better move that. Oh, that offends me. Uh, does it really offend you? Hey, uh, let me help you. Let me read it to you. Instead of saying, oh, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm sorry it offended you, oh, oh, come on. You know, people don't even know what Christianity is all about today. We got guys dressing like gals and gals dressing like God, we got, we got, we got gals that can beat up the guys. It's backwards. I'm saying this, hold fast to your boldness. Now, you don't have to be unkind. And it's hard for a daddy when you love your kids to scold your kids. But if your kids need scolding, scold your kids. Don't say to your kids, well, do whatever you feel like. It'll turn out right. No, it won't. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Hold fast to your position of growth in Christ. Hold fast to your truth. Hold fast to your uh, profession. Hold fast to your boldness. Let me give you one last thing and I'm done. Hold fast to your goodness. Hold fast to your goodness. You know, the Bible says this about Christ. He went about doing good. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to it. When I was youth director down in Hasbro, Mississippi, my wife will remember this, though I'll not name their names. We had a teen boy, like one of our teen girls. He's no good. Both of them in the youth department, he's no good. He's in trouble all the time. He didn't love God. He uh, never one time would you see him uh, doing anything that a dedicated Christian would do. Whenever the preacher would preach, he'd mock, he'd make fun, he'd talk. He would uh, carry on. Never one time did we ever see him go forward to pray at an altar. Not one time. He wasn't faithful to church. Never came soul winning. Never went to the preacher, the pastor that is, uh, for godly counsel of any type. Messed up in the world. I pulled that girl in and I said, look, I know you like that boy and I know that boy likes you and I love you. Break up. Break up. He is no good for you. Break up. She said, but I love him. I said, get over it. Get over it. Don't love him. He's going to wind up ruining you. Now, I'm telling you the best of my ability, and I do have a little bit of insight here. Uh, break that thing off. She broke it off. Oh, he got mad. He got mad at me. He got mad at my wife. He got mad at my kids. I mean, all right. Now, now wait a minute. You know that later on that boy wound up getting on drugs. Later on that boy wound up in jail. 
uh, later on in prison, she went up marrying a good guy, good boy, good boy. And, uh, and now they're serving God together, have a beautiful family. Now, can I tell you, uh, what I'm saying is this. I'm simply saying that uh, you hold fast to that which is good. Understand the difference between good and bad. Understand the difference between right, is wrong, right and wrong. Understand, and, 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 and you hold fast. To, you know, okay, so we had 50 or 60 out here, I guess, uh, washing those cars yesterday and being fried. Being fried. Okay, and wait a minute, though. But that sure is better than going down to a bar and getting drunk. That was a good thing. That was a good thing. You understand? See, if you can get somebody involved in doing something that's good, good is opposite of bad. Amen. You say, well, it's not spiritual. Worse than a car. Ha, that's not spiritual. But it sure beats the opposite. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so you, you go about doing good. You go about helping people. You know, most people are self-centered. Are you listening to me? Most people that are self-centered uh, always have the inward look. It's, a, it's all about me. I, I, uh, look, get concerned when you hear somebody always talking about I, 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 I. You know why? I, I, I. You know why? Because they got I problems. Well, I don't like this, or I have problems, or I uh, disagree with this, or I am offended, or I am uh, uh, hurt, or uh, uh, I uh, think it ought to be this way, or I, you know, oh, okay, the problem is they're self-centered. Uh, wh what about this? What about going to somebody and saying, hey, how about if we, we, how about if we serve God? Now, now wait, 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 I'm done, here it is. Most Christians are isol is is isolationists. Isolationists. And that's why churches have trouble. Because we come and we sit with I myself. Well, that didn't turn. But you sit with you. You know? And then, uh, and then you fellowship with you. Come, ha come handshake in time. Good to see you. I appreciate you. And we live on our own little islands. 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 You know, uh, that's why I, I've been trying to encourage our people. Uh, hey, fellowship. Go, go down to Brahms, fellowship. Fellowship. Stay around after church and shake somebody's hand. Fellowship. Uh, do some things uh, to uh, uh, be able to encourage each other. Amen. Now, I'm saying this. I'm saying there's five times in the New Testament, only five, but five times where he says hold fast. So hold fast to your position of growth in Christ. Hold fast to your truth. Hold fast to your profession. Hold fast to your boldness. And hold fast to your goodness. Don't lose faith in humanity because some don't live it right. He said, well, I just don't trust people because after all, I've been burned. I, I've heard this. Have you heard this? I've heard this. Well, I'm not going to go back to a Baptist church or I'm not going to go to any church because there was a day when I got hurt. Yet that same person gets hurt at Walmart and goes shopping there every week. Doesn't make a lick of sense. So I, I'm saying this. You know, you hold fast to your goodness. Your goodness. Well, nobody's smiling at me. Well, that means they need your smile. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, everybody's grumpy. Well, that means you ought to be the one that's ungrumpy. Come on. I'm saying this. There's some things in the Bible that God says, we as believers now, we as believers, believers now, believers, we are supposed to hold fast to. And if you'll hold fast to those things, you'll honor the Lord because that's what he wants you to do. Father, bless we pray.